Here, King Athelstan, Lord of, of Heroes, the warriors giver of rings, and his brother likewise, Athelin Edmund, lifelong glory they won in the fray with sword's edge around the Battle of Brunnenburg. They clothed the shield wall, hammers leavings, hewed the war linden, the skions, skions of Edward, as it was natural for them from their ancestry, that in warfare they often protected the land against every foe, their horde and homes. They, the attackers fell, the folk of the Scots and the seafarers dropped, doomed, the fields streamed with the blood of men, from the sun in the morning, the splendid star, glided over the lands, bright cradle of God, the everlasting Lord, until that noble creation sank to its rest. There many a man lay, struck down by spears, the men of the north shot down through his shield, likewise the Scot too, weary, stated with war. Forward, the West Saxons, the whole long day, in mounted troops, stayed on the track of the hated peoples, hewed the fugitive foes cruelly from behind with mill-sharpened swords. The Mercians did not refuse her hard hand play to any of the fighters who crossed who crossed the milling waves with Anlaf, sought out the land on a ship's bottom, came fated to the fight, laid fight, still five young kings on the battlefield, slain with swords, likewise seven of Anlaf's earls, all untold raiders, seamen and Scots. There was put to flight the Northman's ruler, forced by need to the ship's keel with a small bodyguard. The vessel rushed on the sea, the king sped off. On the deep, dark deeps he saved his life. There the old man also came with his fleeing men north to his homeland, Constantine. Grey-haired fighter, he had no cause to gloat at the closing together of men. He was bereft of his kinsmen, of his loved ones felled on the field, field of battle, slain in strife, and left his son behind in the place of slaughter, laid low with wounds, that youngster in war. He had no need to boast of war, sword clash, that grizzled chief, old opponent, no more than had Anlaf. They had no cause to laugh with remnant of their foot with the remnant of their forces. They were better, they were there, better men in battle work, on the field of combat, in clash of banners, meeting of spears, encounters of warriors, strife of weapons, when on the slaughter field they played with Edward's heirs. The Northmen went to nailed ships, the bloody survivors of, of spears on Dingsmere, seeking Dublin across the, Across the deep water, in sad mood, back to Ireland. Thus, both the brothers together, King and Athelin, sought out their native soil, the land of the West Saxons, exultant in war. Behind them, they left the corpses to be shared by the dark-coated one, the black raven with curved, curving beak, and the grey-coated one, the eagle with white tail the carrion to be enjoyed by the greedy hawk of war and the grey beast, the wolf in the wood. A great slaughter was not yet in this island slain by an army before this with sword blades, as, book, as books tell us ancient scribes, since here from the east the Angles and the Saxons came over the broad sea. They sought Britain, the proud war makers overcame the Welsh, the keen heroes, won a homeland. That was the Battle of Bremen Boer. In it, Athelstan the Great, son of Alfred the Great, unified the country. He ejected the Vikings and the Scots, the seafarers of the title, and forced them back to Dublin, from where the, the Vikings had made a base in Ireland. Athelstan the Great unified the country for the first time in its long history. Af Alfred the Great had written down a codes of laws, codes of rights to be asserted by men 
in their, in their lives and duties to be forced on them or up, taken up. The men were called weapon takers in that time and in this, this battle they took up the weapon, they took up the sword, the spear and the shield and they shattered the opponents and enemies of England. And they will rise and rise and rise again like lions over the centuries, conquering all enemies. This country was born to fight. It is, we are the heirs of Hengis and Horsa. We are the heirs of Alfred the Great and uh, Athelstan the Great. For further reading of Anglo-Saxon poems, read this book. The English War Warrior by Stephen Pollington. In, it, in my next video, I will be talking about the Battle of Morden, which happened before the Battle of Bannenburg, in the beginning of the, uh, of, the, of the Viking Age. Thank you for listening.